everybody. We are traveling to Sneeds Ferry, a town we go to periodically here, about 45 miles northeast of where I live. And we're going to be installing a 24 and a half sear Daikin mini split heat pump. Um, it's a house we worked on before. They have a particular sitting area that was built in under a porch, and there's no way to get ductwork there. So we're going to add a little 9,000 BTU mini split to cool and heat that area. So stick around, and we'll see the new Fillmore flaring tool as well. Guys, this is our little sitting area. It's actually built with a porch above it, so there's no room to get the duct work out here. There is duct work in the ceiling in the little bedding area, but in the summertime, we have this window, these big open doors leading out there to the waterway. It's beautiful out here, but it also gets a little bit too warm. So what we're gonna do is gonna, we're gonna come in on this wall here and put a, uh, the head right there centered on the wall. It'll come out actually where some of our, our mana condensers sat or sitting from earlier this year and our old carrier Tech 2000 from our zone system because this is all part of that same house. So we're going to go ahead and get the head on the wall and uh, go from there. This is our Daikin wall hung mini split air handler. Just a little look at it. They all look pretty much the same. But it you know, draws in air from the top. There's a little filter. A little pre filter and discharges here at the bottom. And on the back of it, back here, will be our bracket. We'll take that off. Go ahead and mount our bracket on the wall and I cut our hole with a single clip right on. It's actually pretty easy. Um, it's a good one man project. All right, we have our rough placement for the bracket, have our line set hole drilled out, and what I do is I do a little pilot hole. And there we are. Here's our pilot hole. That's where our wall penetration for our line set will be. We'll bring it down and over. And right here to where the condenser will sit. We have our bracket on the wall and our hole drilled to the outside. There's our hole right there, a little insulation in the wall. And our stud is right in the center here. I found that by going to the hole, you can see there's a stud there, and I figured they were 16 inch on center, and they were. So I have two screws, and these are just the holes that we're gonna need. I drilled another hole, put a very long screw in the center of it just for some extra strength. Now each of the corners, I have anchors, and I'm about to screw these four screws in as well, just so it doesn't pull off of the wall, because they have a tendency to pull off of the wall if you don't put the uh, anchors in the corners. And it looks kind of nasty, because you can see the, the hole for the line set, and it just doesn't look right. Uh, so we're gonna put anchors on all four sides and then we can mount the head to the wall All right, I got the wire sticking through the wall What I like to do is I like to go ahead and put the wire through the hole into the uh, air handler Because it's kind of tricky sometimes getting the wire fed through in place So I'll go ahead and stick it through the wall and kind of thread it through there Then we'll be all set and want to worry about fiddling around with the wire until we got the copper through the wall So we're gonna go ahead and put the head on the wall Bring the wire through there and it'll be all set up well, I took another look at my mini split head on the wall here and it looked a little bit out of level. So I actually had to take it off the wall again and it had to become a little skewed for some reason. So I had to correct that. So a little bit of pain in the butt stuff. But I got it back on the wall. It's pretty tight on the wall, which is good. You, know, you want to be pretty close to the wall. Uh, you don't want to be sagging off or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the line set cover, the base plate, on the wall. Then we can run the line set around and then set the outdoor unit. There's our slim duck mounted to the wall there. Comes around, down. Stop short of the platform because there's not enough room to fit behind it. Starts up again at the bottom of the platform. Runs out to the side. There's a little bit of a space right here, or it runs down through here. So what I did was put vibration isolators behind it and screwed through the isolators into the wall so it'd have a nice firm base. It'll terminate right there and I'll set the condenser right out there beyond that uh, opening there. We have our line set coming out of the wall here. It's our drain tubing. We're gonna take these nuts off the line set. And we have our flare nuts and flares on the existing line set because they come with flares, but we're gonna cut those off and make our own flares. We have the new Hillmore Orbital Flare. 
We're going to use it because it makes some sweet flares and it's pretty easy to do. We have the Hillmore flaring tool on the copper right now. See there's a little automatic stop so you don't go too far. What you do is you'll slide the tool over this area. There's a little notch up here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you screw into it. You just crank the flare down and when you get to a certain point, it won't let you crank any harder. Uh, it has a little clutch, so you don't have to worry about over tightening the flare. So I'm going to go ahead and make this one and I'll let you see it. This is the flare that the Hillmore tool made. Very nice, very pretty. It's going to work great. I'm going to go ahead and finish these two flares and then I'll run the line set on down the track all the way to where the condenser sits. Okay guys, I have 160 pounds. They're about 155, 160 pounds. Test pressure on right now. There's our flares. Seem like they're holding. I'm going to give them a while. I usually put a little bubbles on them too. Just to make sure. So we'll go ahead and leave that. Go ahead and do some wiring. And then return to check those. We have our new panel up. The man is wired back up. I have to turn the breaker on for it. Uh, sort of a rough placement of our wires. We're wired up a little bit. It's got to tidy it up. Uh, the flares didn't leak according to the nitrogen test confirmed by the bubbles. I gotta put insulation on those and put the panel back on the unit. We are pulling a vacuum now. Happy, happy. So I can go put on the rest of the line set cover. As you see, I put on one piece to kind of hold it in place, but I gotta put the rest of it on and then the part that's up there. Uh, so things are coming together. Uh, just a lot of tiny things that add up as far as time. Putting little filters inside the indoor unit, things like that. There's just like a thousand things just like that. But we're coming together. I'm gonna go ahead and tidy up some stuff while the vacuum's running, and hopefully we can start her up here in a few minutes. Okay, our Daikin is up and running at full bore, and as you see, it's very quiet. Uh, I feel some wind. That's about it. But it is cooling very well, and it is very quiet. We'll take a look at the indoor unit in a moment. Now look at our little stand we built off of the stairwell just to keep it a little bit off the ground. But everything worked out well. Here is our Daikin air handler on the wall. I have it in dehumidify mode right now. Just kind of testing her out. Also has a, I guess you can call it strong mode, where it just uh, gives it everything she has. We'll say that. And uh, it was effective. I'll say that. But now I just want to check the dehumidify mode, see if it's working. And then we'll be just about done. Wiped it off a little bit because these things always get dirty when you're putting them in. So, I have to keep them clean. But that's about it for today. And I will catch you guys on the next one.